As some of you know, I'm a bit of nutter for time lapses. In the past, I've done videos on all sorts of time lapses and hyperlapses, made both with camera and with drones. I've also made a series of three videos about day to night time lapses, considered the hardest one and also known as Holy Grail. This video is the first of a series about time lapses of sunrise, which are great fun to shoot and post process. In this one, I will show how to shoot them against the full sun and with fixed exposure, while in another one, I will show another method involving exposure ramping. Since there are a lot of things to analyze, I will concentrate only on the photography side, while I will make a second video about how to post process them. You will find a link to a playlist containing these videos at the end of this one and in the description below once they will be published. If you're interested in time lapses of all kind, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel. The home of fearless time lapse heroes. Time lapses of sunset are considered very hard to achieve properly because of the extreme dynamic range and also because the intensity and the color of light changes constantly during the process. In the case of sunrise, things are even harder for two reasons. First of all, because we have to get up very early. I always wonder why they don't do them at the more civilized time. Carpe diem. The most important thing in a time lapse is to get the correct exposure of the brightest moment. In other words, it is paramount to avoid burning the highlights. But at the same time, we don't want to underexpose either, as the darkest part will be even darker. In the case of a sunrise, we do not see the brightest part, as we have to expose beforehand. Before shooting, it will be absolutely pitch dark, so even focusing and framing will be hard. I suggest to set the focus and, if possible, the framing the day before in daylight and have it ready. There is certainly some trial and error involved and even a bit of luck, but it is worth it, as there is a clear feeling of pride when we get the perfect result. No pain, no gain. At the moment I am in lockdown, but from my balcony I have a clean view of the Union Sea. Normally, for a time lapse of any kind, I prefer to have some foreground elements, or else several features on different planes. If I turn my camera to the left, there is the east coast of Sicily to the left and the southern tip of Italy to the right, at least on a clean day, a much more interesting scene. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we need to go straight at the sun which will come in that direction. If I had freedom of movement, I would have chosen a better setting, but in times like this, we have to do it this way. In Northern Europe for sunset or sunrise time lapses, I use the frequency of a shot every 6 to 10 seconds. In Iceland, I even went to 15 seconds. But at first here in Southern Europe, I was taken aback as sunrises and sunset are much faster. So if I use the same frequency, the final result would be too short. Doing a time lapse in Malta, I had this very strong banding and shift of colors in the sky. And then I realized that it was due to the fact that I was taking a shot every six seconds. So the change in luminosity and in color was too fast to be reproduced in a correct way. I have noticed that in southern Italy, the frequency that works best for sunset is between one shot every 3, 4 or 5 seconds. I guess it should be something similar for sunrises. For our American friends, we are at the same latitude as North Carolina. Generally, in time lapses, I take about 300 shots for a bit more of 12 seconds of footage. 
But in the case of Sunset or Sunrise, I prefer shooting around 900 shot, as it is more effective to watch a good part of the process. So I get about 36 seconds of footage, and I can trim the beginning or the end for bits too dark or too bright. The length covered in real time will be about an hour, which is plenty for a sunrise at this latitude. Since we will be shooting at a fixed exposure, with no ramping, the initial part will be very dark, so we must rely on the ability of our camera to recover shadows. I am using an Icon D850, which I consider the beast of the darkness, which an excellent ability to recover shadows. The benefit of this method is to obtain a seamless result, without any jump cuts. There are three settings we can use for exposure. Regarding shutter speed in time lapses, if I'm taking a shot every 4 seconds, I like to use 2 seconds shutter speed in order to get the correct motion blur. I have done a very in depth video about shutter speed and motion blur. You can click on the top of the screen if you want to watch it now, or you will find a link in the description and at the end of this video. In this case, it is not crucial to keep such a long shutter speed, since there are no moving parts like cars boats or people, but I would not go faster than half a second to maintain smooth movement in the clouds. My Nikon DF50 has a very low setting for ISO at 31, and now I can easily go at least to 800 ISO without introducing too much noise. So ISO is the value where we have plenty of latitude. Regarding aperture we have some room, but if it varies too much, some problem with that of field can be introduced. Also, I would prefer to keep a small aperture, once the sun is visible, in order to get better flare from the sun. Let's say something between f9 and uh, f11. Now we are ready to start. It is pitch dark outside, and we have to guess the right exposure for the brightest part of the time lapse. But I prefer to start with some setting that will lead to overexposure so that I can point you out some issues. I'm not using an ND filter and my settings are shutter speed 1 second, ISO 31 and aperture 7.1. I have chosen a frequency of one shot every 5 seconds. With these settings I expect to be exposing correctly for the first part, the very dark one, while the second part will be severely overexposed, but this is fine, as it will help us to find the correct exposure. Let's see the result. The first part is very well exposed and the first colors of Aurora are really nice, with a bit of a blue cast in the shadows, which is to be expected and can be corrected by adjusting the white balance. But after midway through we start to lose detail in the sky, well before the sun appears. A bit further on the sky is totally blown out, and a couple of seconds later the same happens to the sea. We also notice that the color of the sky goes from blue to grey vertically, from bottom to top. This is very bad, and is in part due to the frequency of shots. The luminosity changes too fast, and I will then set the frequency to 4 shots per second for the next try. If we look to a shot further on with a full sign in the sky, it is of course a total disaster. But if we open it in Lightroom, we can more or less estimate how much we need to compensate. In my opinion, we are at least 5 stops overexposed, maybe 6. I also did another time lapse, obviously the day after, to test the frequency of one shot every 3 seconds. But as you can see, the end result is too slow, we cannot fit the entire process in 30 seconds of footage. So regarding frequency of shots, we will stick with one photo every 4 seconds. Next day, enter the magic ND filter. I'm going to use an ND500, which reduced the luminosity by 9 stops. My favorite choice for time lapses is either 200 or 500. I decided to reduce the exposure by 6 stops, compared to our first test. 
Since the filters reduce it by 9, I have to actually increase exposure settings by 3 stops. So I maintain shutter speed to 1 second, I increase ISO to 100 and aperture to 5.6. That morning the weather conditions were excellent, almost perfect. I really like the cloud up in the sky, while the sun is completely out. Ideally I would prefer to have a couple of small clouds shading partially the sun. I like the result, the color are really nice with just a hint of a green cast that we can easily fix in post production. I will show you how in my upcoming video about post processing. There is the tiniest shift of colors after 8 seconds but we can fix that too. There is also sun flare, quite obvious when the sun is in the picture. Some people like it, others don't. I sort of like the small long one to the left, but not really the round one in the middle. I will try to move the tripod down and tilt the camera up a bit to modify the angle. It might reduce the flare. One thing we can improve on is the shape of the sun. If we set a smaller aperture, we should get more of a star-like shape. I know, the sun is a star, but you know what I mean. So for the next day I set the aperture at f16. I generally don't go this far, as with most lenses we lose some sharpness. But in this case it might be worth in order to improve the shape of the sun. By modifying aperture from 5.6 to 16 I am reducing 3 stops of light. I can compensate by reducing shutter speed from 1 second to 2 seconds and by rising ISO from 100 to 400. The conditions are not exactly what I was hoping for, as there are no clouds at all, but the result is not too bad. The shape of the sun is, in my opinion, much nicer, and we can see the rays much better now, thanks to the smaller aperture. There are a couple of occasions where the inner part of the sun is slightly burnt. Maybe next time I will reduce exposure by half a stop, if we are aiming for a situation of full sun and no clouds. The nasty round flare is gone, so moving down the camera a bit did the trick. For obvious reason, we only get one bullet per day. And nature doesn't always cover it. Life is not always fair. The next day it is totally overcast. We don't even get to see the sun at all. I did notice the clouds, so before starting I increased exposure to avoid being completely underexposed. Not at all what we were looking for, but still, quite interesting. Then we have an interesting one. There are some clouds in the upper part of the sky and a good amount of haze just above the sea, so that the sun cannot shine completely, as if it was behind a thin veil. I like this one. Another very similar one, pretty good, but we are in the middle of April and this is not at all the best period of the year down here. Temperatures start to rise and there is a constant haze at the horizon. It will get worse and worse as the summer kicks in. The period for video or photo here is from October to March, when you get much clearer hair, saturated skies and nice individual clouds. But for the purpose of this tutorial, what we want is to optimize exposure with the light condition we get. One of the great things about sunrises is the element of surprise. They are all different from each other. Old one I've shown here had hardly any editing done at all. In the next video I will show you how much we can improve them with post-processing. The method we use here based on fixed exposure has the advantage of being totally seamless, without any cuts. The downside being that the first light of Aurora will be a bit too dark. I will do another one on how to shoot sunrises time lapses with focus ramping. And it will be much easier to do since now we have tested the best exposure values both for the brightest and the darkest parts. If you like this video, like it, share it and definitely subscribe to my channel. We have great fun here. Bye for now.